Hey everyone, Vegan Cupid here, vegan matchmaker and dating coach. I have been helping vegan singles find love in various capacities for 10 years now. And today I have a really, really special couple to introduce you to. I haven't been so excited to share their story. They are honestly my favorite love story of 2020. And to be honest, I wasn't quite sure if they would feel comfortable doing this video because it's kind of it's kind of stressful, you know, if they're really putting themselves out there. But they are just they have just been so supportive and they want to share their story to inspire and motivate people to show them what is possible when you have an open mind and an open heart. OK, so super, super excited. And to give you a bit of a backstory, so um, their names are Todd and Anu. And so Todd actually hired me to be his personal vegan Cupid. And as part of my matchmaking um, program, P uh, my clients actually go through my 10 week program. So this is the program they take to make sure that they truly are ready to find and attract the right partner. OK, because I really place a huge emphasis on doing the, the deep internal work to get to this place where you feel amazing and confident and inspired to find love. And so something pretty magical happened. And so, Todd, like I said, Todd hired me to do to be his one on one matchmaker. And Anu joined the 10 week program. OK, they met in one of my weekly group coaching calls. And this was back in August. OK, so they met on a call and then uh, they came to a couple of Zoom hangouts and I picked up on something. I really rely on my intuition a lot. And my intuition was telling me that there was something magical between them. And so let's hear their story so here they are welcome todd and anu thank you so much for being here so i reached out to todd and he's i reached out to both of them but i reached out to him first and i said todd do you do you feel anything is there something going on here because i've picked up on something and so todd let us tell us what were you going to do that very day that i contacted you yeah so this is this is absolutely true. I was that very day, um, which I think it was maybe like less than a certainly less than a week from the session where Anu and I kind of had our our especially special like geek out together moment. So I was I was actually thinking I need to write to Karen and ask her what she thinks of me and Anu if if she thinks that would be a good match because I was already starting to feel something and Karen uh, picked up on that. Yeah, so I I was just so pleased when I heard that. So I reached out to Anu. She didn't know I had talked to Todd. I played all innocent. I said, Anu, is there possibly something going on? You know, do you feel something? And she said, yes. And I was like jumping up and down because I was so excited. <laughs> and then um, I reached out to both of them. And I said, you know, I think there's something here. Why don't you just why don't you just explore it? No strings attached. OK, and I do want to mention Todd lives in California and Anu lives in Ottawa, my hometown. So Anu and I have actually met in couple uh, in person a couple of times. Um, but so, yeah, so they live very, very far apart. And yes, it's COVID. But here we are today, six months later. And so let's let's hear a bit more about their story. So um, Anu, why don't we start with you? Can you kind of tell us what, where you were at um, before you started working with me? Sure. So um, I had moved to Ottawa about uh, four years ago. And at that time, it was mainly like trying to do a lot of meetups to meet people, make friends and all of that kind of stuff. And then I realized that there was a huge um, vegan community in Ottawa. And that led me to Karen and her uh, speed dating event. So I went to a couple of those and I'm still good friends with a couple of the, uh, my matches and like all uh, some of the people that I've met in the speed dating. And then um, I think I did your uh, video dating 101 workshop. And then after that, I was like, I should call her and see if I should like have a, a chat with her about her 10 week program. And that's when I decided to call you and like learn more about the program and everything. That's awesome. And Todd, tell us about like why you decided to work with a vegan matchmaker and where you're at. 
Yeah, well, so um, I had had my first experience dating a vegan in 2019. Um, that relationship didn't end up working out, but it was the first time that I felt, um, I guess the sort of connection that I now think is necessary for a relationship. And it kind of put the idea of finding a relationship back into my, you know, list of top priorities for the last like six years, I was kind of just focusing on my career and getting a house and things like that. Um, so that motivated me, but I live in the northern end of the Central Valley in California, which people think California, they think, you know, very like left leaning, a lot of vegans, Central Valley, not as much so. So the pool of uh, vegan women within, you know, my age range is, is pretty small. So I knew I needed to cast a wider net if I wanted to specifically date vegans. Um, I went down sort of a Google rabbit hole of how do vegan singles meet? And I stumbled upon your website, watched some videos, pondered reaching out for a few days, then emailed you. And I think we talked on the phone like a couple days later. And yeah, I mean, you know the story since then. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And so, okay, so you guys, you know, I, I, I sent that email to both of you and then you decided to explore things. So what, what was it like at the beginning stages of getting to know each other um, via video? Um, I, I could take that. Uh, I think at the beginning, to be honest, it was, it, it was very strange because you're, um, you're, you're not inhibiting the same space as the other person. But I think we just kind of stuck with it. And also we had like consistent days that we would like video chat on. And for me, it's like, the person who I am in person is the person that I am on video video chats. I think in the beginning, I didn't even let Todd get a word in edgewise at all. Like I did most of the talking and Todd would be like, okay, <laughs> and all of that. But like, I think um, getting uh, a consistent um, time when you meet uh, and chat with a person, I think that's a very good, um, thing to begin with, with video dating. I don't think you have to be apprehensive about it, but, um, yeah, consistency. Todd, do you yeah. have anything to add? Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, video dating feels a little odd at first. Um, but I mean, we're probably all going to be used to it by the time COVID's over. Uh, but one of the things for me was um, I'm, I'm not exactly a shy person, but I'm introverted and, and reserved. So the fact that Anu is just so like disarming and direct and full of energy kind of um, pulled me out of my shell a little a little more than, than I think uh, would happen with most people. So I, I started feeling comfortable opening up and having the sort of you know, conversation you'd probably have on a date in person with her pretty, pretty quickly. Um, so, so to me, it really didn't matter that it was over video, you know, past maybe our first video date together. Yeah. That's awesome. And like, I, I want to point out also that, you know, when they both started working with me, they never imagined that they would end up talking to someone who lived so far apart. Right. And so, the I hear on a regular basis about how people don't want to do a long distance relationship. They think that it can't work. And a lot of people, you know, especially during COVID have said that it's impossible to, um, you know, to develop a connection together. So what, you know, what kinds of what kinds of activities have you two done over video? Because I know some of them and they are just like the most adorable thing, but I please, please share with people that, so you, you can give them ideas. Um, so I, so our first date was actually like, we were, we cooked together over WhatsApp. And then we just, um, we, we talked for a while after that while eating the food. I think we're both, um, foodies, even like vegan foodies. So we like are like very like, into food and stuff and that kind of connected us uh together as well um we binge watched a lot of like shows together i got some like there were some shows that todd was like you should we should watch this together and there was this one show that i was too scared to watch by myself so that i was like todd we have to watch this together so then we watched th those shows together and then we had like a virtual vacation over the december holidays where we cooked together and played parkitect uh which was which was very cool and 
Todd could talk more about what happened there. But like, yeah, in general, like I think we just end up like just talking for hours, just go on these tangents and like just follow wherever we go, kind of thing. Todd, do you have anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the the cooking together. Um, we we cooked um, a news mother's chana masala recipe, which was so good. I I broke my mortar and pestle, so I had to get creative for like, uh, you know, getting all the different spices ground down. But it was it was worth it. It was amazing. <laughs> Um, as Anu mentioned, we played some computer games. Um, we played a little bit of Stellaris, which is like a strategy game that people like us who are huge Babylon 5 fans enjoy because you're like controlling a space empire. Uh, Parkitect, as Anu mentioned, we played together. The, the incident she hit, hinted at, um, she accidentally deleted a roller coaster that I'd spent not a lot of time, but maybe like five minutes building. and. I think she thought maybe that would be our first argument, but like, I, I just was kind of like, you know, no, I know she didn't mean it. <laughs> I turned on that dialogue, like it's it's fine. And, and I just rebuilt it. So that actually kind of told us something about how we relate to each other that we probably are just not going to argue that much and we're cool with letting things go. Um, other activities, yeah, we watched a lot of shows together. There's this app called, um, I think it's called, is it called 27 or 72 one way or the other? 27. Uh, yeah, and it lets us synchronize our streams so that we can watch things together. Um, and then, of course, we have a big thing planned for Valentine's Day this Sunday. And then afterwards, we're talking about trying to fix a news gaming computer together over video, because both of us have built computers, so <laughs> together, maybe we can figure it out. Uh, that's awesome, I love that. And so there you have it. Like it is really possible to have some fun activities together virtually. And you know, COVID has completely changed the dating landscape 100%. But I don't think that it's changed it in in so many bad ways. I really see a lot of positive things and people have had to adapt just like Todd and Anu. And so you really get to get to know someone on a really deep level because all you have is the communication. And so if early on you see that there's no, you guys run out of, you know, you run out of, you run out of things to talk about with the person, then, you know, it's probably not a good match. But like with these two, if you constantly have things to talk about, you know, hours and hours, like that's a really amazing sign. And so you recently bo uh, told me that you have decided to make it official and give yourselves the titles of boyfriend and girlfriend. And I just thought that was like so, so sweet. I was so like jumping up and down when I saw that because I, I, rem I, I love labels. Okay. I know some people are not into it. I'm into it. Um, and I remember my my boyfriend asking me to be his girlfriend and I just thought it was like the sweetest thing ever and so let's let's talk a bit about and I know Todd for you it was like you said it was a bit more important so let's talk a bit about that yeah so I was I don't remember exactly when but I I expressed fairly early on to Anu that I was ready for a label should she be ready for a label and she wasn't quite ready for a label yet. Like we, we were definitely exclusively dating each other, but we kind of had this idea, well, let's wait until we actually meet to put a label on it. And I, I was I was cool with that. Um, at some point though, she, um, this was like February 3rd, I think it was, uh, she came around and, and asked me like, um, uh, would I like her to be my girlfriend? And I of course said yes, and was, was thrilled myself at that. Um, uh, I, I think for us it became like what we are right now is essentially what people would call, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend. So it just made sense to to have that label. There have been a couple cases where I've tried to explain what we were before the label. Um, like my mother told one of her work friends um, about, you know, Todd's girlfriend. And I had to be like, no, Todd does not have a girlfriend yet. He has someone who will probably be a girlfriend when they meet in five months. So <laughs> it makes things easier. Um, I guess another point is I feel really secure with the connection that Anu had and I have. So I didn't need a label per se. I didn't feel like the label was there for security, but it just, it makes, it makes sense to me because 
what we are, everyone would, would pretty much call that. And we are dedicated to, you know, seeing this through and meeting and, you know, if, if things work out when we meet, then really for the long term. That's awesome. Anu, do you have anything to add? Yeah, so I think um, Todd hit on a lot of points. But um, yeah, for me, I think I'm not very much a label person. And to me, in the beginning, it felt like it was just that labels would add pressure. But I think um, there was like a little bit of a shift um, that like I think both of us had at the same time were like feeling like a, um, that we were getting closer together, I guess. And at that point, I was like, why not put a label on it? And I asked him if he would be OK with me being his girlfriend. <laughs> <That's hard. laughs> I love that. And so that's a good tie into my next question, because this is something else that I hear a lot. A lot of people tell me that they even refuse to go on a video date with someone because they can't tell if there's any chemistry. So what do you two, you know, have to say about that? Um, I think one of the, I think one time we were talking, this is early on, and I was still not used to like the time difference between um, California and Ottawa. So like um, me and Todd usually um, video chat on like Wednesdays and Saturdays. That's like a consistent time. So I thought I had enough time to like put on like a face mask. That day I was like, I, I like, yeah. So I had like a charcoal mask on and, he, and Todd messaged me. He's like, are you ready to chat? And I was like, um, if you're okay with me wearing, having like a face mask on. And I sent him like a little um, Mrs. Doubtfire gif. And he was okay with it and he stuck around. So yeah. I think chemistry is, um, I think for both me and Todd, it's more about that we are able to just be ourselves with, with each other. We're both like very dorky and have like a very dorky sense of humor and like very geeky and nerdy. And we like have um, all of this in common. So I think like we created a space where we can be ourselves and that kind of like created this chemistry, I guess. Yeah. Todd? Yeah, yeah. I, I think for us, the chemistry comes from um, one of the things is despite having like certain differences in our upbringing, we, we, we found that we had very similar upbringings in some ways, like our like personal close knit family culture was very similar. So we just we just seem to click in ways that um, really like work and tell us that we sort of like feel comfortable and at home with the other person. Um, and as Anu said, we get on all these like wild tangents where we geek out about things together. Um, and, you know, that's kind of rare. I mean, I, I can't speak for Anu here, but for myself, at least, I have historically had trouble finding anyone who appreciates the things that are weird about me. Every weird thing that I've shown to Anu so far, she is like on board for, even if she's not like super into it herself, she's passionate for my passion. And you know, I think I'm the same way toward her. Like I love hearing about her house plants and things that are not part of my lives, but I love because she loves. Um, I think when we meet, there will be an additional factor to it. I, I mean, I, I think Anu is like gorgeous when I look at her over the video. So I really don't see that. I don't see anything bad to discover there. Um, but yeah, like meeting will, will be a little different and we'll have to see how the in-person chemistry is. But I think for both of us, like Anu said, the, the like mental connection is the thing that really matters and builds the chemistry. A hundred percent. And I mean, even for like couples who are, you know, dating in person, sometimes the chemistry is not even there at the beginning, but it develops as you get to know someone and you two have been getting to know each other on such a deep level for so long. Right. So I absolutely think that this can, this can work. Right. And it's, it all depends. It's like you both realize that there was a really strong connection there and you both decided to not let, you know, COVID be a barrier, uh, the distance be a barrier, because if you would have both told yourself, you know, that, no, I'm not going to consider anyone who lives, you know, outside of 50, a 50 mile radius, like you would have been totally closing yourself yourselves off and you would have been missing out on this amazing opportunity. Right. So that's that's why it's it's so, so important just to have an open mind and just see where things go with no pressure, right? That's, that's, that really is the key. And so 
what what do you guys have planned for like when you're gonna meet and how much longer like i'm so excited and todd i hope you're gonna be coming here so that i can also meet you and, and hang out with you guys so we're thinking um in july um we're anticipating july if both of us get the vaccines together and um if everything works out um but like so i have a little bit of stuff planned so we were thinking to go on hikes in gatineau park uh and then uh i'll show them around my hood neighborhood and like my take them to my like favorite restaurants and um just go like have a beach day or something in july and a uh, picnic in parliament and all that kind of stuff but mainly just spend time together i think the fact that we're like just uh, far apart, like we need to kind of spend time uh, together. So like, I think that probably will be the main thing that we do. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the, the plan is in our head, we're saying July, just so we have something to look forward to. But realistically, both of us vaccinated and, you know, people like Fauci saying that uh, non-essential travel is responsible and safe and border controls allowing for it even um all of that has to be in place first um the first time we see each other i'm gonna like uh, get a hotel room just because we want to be responsible and accommodating so that like whatever we feel we have like that space to explore it and whatever we need um but yeah all the things that anu said going on hikes uh vegan food we do want to come visit you if the scheduling permits um oh i will one, make the time don't you worry <laughs> one of the specific things we were thinking is you know assuming that stores are open by then um go to a board game store together and like pick out the first board game for our joint collection because i own a lot of board games new own some board games and um she has expressed excitement at playing all the games that I collect, but you know, rarely play. So that will be the start of a new connection for us as well. I, I love that. And I've told Todd that if I come over there, there might be some board games missing and like I'll have an extra suitcase that will just be filled with just some of his board games. <laughs> That's awesome. And so do either of you have any words of encouragement for anyone who's watching who is single, vegan really wants to find a vegan partner but is feeling discouraged and thinking that it's never going to happen for them um i'll just say it's not impossible i think uh, the thing that both me and todd um uh, went into this is just uh with like just an open mind but also with intention um and i think that's what kind of uh led us to where we are now but um yeah just have an open mind and don't let like distance or um hard work or whatever uh, stop you from finding love like karen says <laughs> dad yeah i i have like a couple points um one of the most important ones I, so this one i think everyone would already know being honest and direct like anu and i truly do not play any games we tell each other how we feel about things and, and just like not having any of those games makes us both feel secure. And I think at the distance, if we didn't feel secure, we, we'd have a problem because like you, you have to totally trust the other person since you're not seeing them. And you know, like if something was going on, you wouldn't know. So without that trust, it's not gonna work. Like you could put up a facade and maybe date someone who isn't a good match for you, but like, what do you win by doing that? Nothing. The other thing I touched on this earlier is being earnest. That's a word I love to throw around, like just throw your passions out there and be yourself. Like don't, don't make yourself overly like cool and different thinking that that will, will win you something. Um, like I, I have tried dating people who had no passion for the things that I cared about and who I didn't have passion for their things. And it just, it didn't work. We might very much respect and like each other, but there wasn't that chemistry and with Anu and I, it's like, I wanna hear about computational biology and machine learning for her. And I get excited when I hear about it. And she gets excited if I tell her about like code that I'm writing or stuff I'm building in satisfactory with my friends after work, or just these weird things that we both like make the other person excited because we're excited. And that is, that is the thing that you want with someone. And you can have that even at a distance. 
That's beautiful. I'm just surprised that Todd actually even, when I talk about this stuff, like he actually gets it. So <laughs> it's very interesting that that's the, the first time I've had that. Um, so that's very interesting too. But I agree with what Todd said, right? Like be happy for the uh, what happens to the other person, be earnest, be like be as um, your authentic self. Like there's no point in you having this uh, facade and being like, I'm gonna be like this. And then when, cause eventually you guys will have to meet. And then if things, when you meet and you're totally different, then then you, you're like back to square one, right? So yeah. That's awesome. And would you, do either of you have any words of advice or wisdom for anyone who is thinking about working with me, but they're not quite sure if it's going to work for them. And I'm hoping after they see like the potential, obviously not everyone is going to join my 10 week program and find someone in that program, but Hey, it happened to you guys. So that's, that just one of the possible, you know, things, but yeah, is there anything you know that that you could say to someone who who is just thinking about working with me, but they're not sure because it's it is a big investment. Um, but you obviously both you know think that it was a very worthwhile investment. So what can you say about that? Um, okay, I, I think I can say this. Um, for me, I think it. I think the ten week program was very helpful because it kind of there are certain um, things that you are so um, you do without thinking, right? Like there are certain things you um, go towards when you're trying to find a relationship and all of this stuff. And I think your ten week program makes you work on your. Um, yeah, it's very worthwhile to do the the ten week program, and I learned a lot about myself before I met Todd. So, yeah, so there there um, the the modules that you have and the the kind of help that you kind of uh, give with your um, with your clients is it just makes it worthwhile to do, and I think um, just getting to know yourself and being open um, through the program leads to a lot of things in life right that's amazing thank you for sharing that and yeah you're living proof do the work be open-minded you know take my advice and then amazing things like this can happen and todd do you have anything to add any final words yeah yeah um i, I agree with what anu said and and just for anyone else out there who's like a software developer who tends to be like skeptical of things like Hmm, this self-help stuff seems suspicious. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm that sort of person too, but joining Karen's program really was helpful to me. I, I needed to have people to bounce things off of in terms of things that I thought didn't work in previous relationships and work through those um, and got to a place where a new and I could connect. Like if I'd met a new naturally in the wild, I don't know that I would have been as willing to let my guard down and be unreserved. And if I if I had not left my guard down with a new, like we probably wouldn't have connected because we wouldn't have had those geek out sessions where we started feeling the spark. So yeah, it was a critical part of, of my path to getting here. That's awesome. Well, thank you so, so much you two for sharing your incredible story. I am so grateful and honored and it's such an amazing feeling to be the one, um, you know, responsible for bringing you guys together. It's just, it warms my heart so, so much. So thank you so much. And um, I really look forward to the day that you guys meet. I'm going to be like on pins and needles, like super excited. And maybe I'll go spy on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much.